Hi everyone, this is Cyrus for BestSaberCareers.com. Today I'm going to go back to one of the reviews that we did past week. It was showing you Adobe Photoshop and some of the Adobe products and it was a short review and we got a lot of questions on how they work and and when you're using a camcorder it's hard to, to show maybe how responsive the app is so I'm just going to try it now with an HDMI capture to show you guys how some of these Adobe products work. Now I was asked about I think Adobe Lightroom. I'm not sure if it was available in my package when I get it. This is what I got so maybe I turned it off and I installed those. I have Adobe Bridge, Illustrator, InDesign and also Adobe Photoshop 64-bit. So let's go with this one. Because it's not optimized for Windows 8, as far as it's not a Windows 8 application per se, it's a Windows application, it it opens the the desktop, so it, this looks like Windows 7, per, I mean, there are differences, there are big differences, but when you look at this, you don't say, oh, this is a new operating system per se, whereas the, the main Windows 8, the, the tiles and everything, that looks completely new, so... So as soon as I start the app, the, the, the fan starts working, which is expected. It, it happens on my desktop as well. Now, when you're holding a tablet and it makes a noise, you never s s hear a noise from your iPad. At least I haven't. It does, even when it heats up, there is none because there's no loud fan. This, this fan is not that loud, but it, you do hear the noise when starting. All right, I want to create a new book. Let's say Just gonna see if I can find a document to put in there. It's it's much better to use these apps with a keyboard, but if you don't want if you don't have the keyboard you can just use the on a screen keyboard to enter information and all that. But this is just doing shortcuts it seems. So so yeah, these these apps are not perfect per se. If you had a keyboard and I don't have a keyboard handy right now, you do get a keyboard with this particular tablet for free. And for I know that for Asus you actually have to pay, so you want to be aware of that. So I'm just gonna. write something here Anyway, so you, so you get the point. It's uh, 
so as far as the menus go, go are pretty, they're pretty responsive. I don't see any lag. I don't know if you guys see any issues. The speed is pretty much the same as on my eight core desktop computer. Obviously, the performance is going to be different when you do production, and I do a lot of audio production. The speed, the processor that you have, actually affects how fast you get things done. Just like the the speed of your internet determines how fast you can upload videos, for instance. So it's not just like like you can buy a tablet and just replace an eight core computer with it. But for for basic stuff, if you want to change some something quick on the on the road, this actually has you covered. Now a lot of you guys asked me about the Windows button that was on the tablet when I did the review a week ago, and I never actually address explained what it was. The Windows tablet actually gets you to the main screen and switches between the screens. So when I tap, it actually switches between open screens from different modes per se. So now I can go and open up Adobe Photoshop. Now the slowness that you see from Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator or Dreamweaver, it's more actually for the Photoshop is actually fast. It's more on Adobe and not really on the tablet. Now, one thing that you want to be make sure of when using this tablet is is choosing the right screen resolution for for me. And I just want to show you guys what I have. I'm I'm using 1080p resolution, whereas if you're doing it on the tablet itself, I changed it for for the HDMI to 1080p. On the tablet itself, I would go with something much less let's say 1600 to 900 because no matter how big your tablet's screen is you still are not going to be able to actually see things clearly at least i can't because the icons get so small at the high resolution and for some apps you can work around that for some apps you can't so if when i'm using the desktop version only i i use a much lower resolution now, if I want to watch a movie, for instance, then I change the resolution for that specifically. But for what I do, a smaller, for a lower resolution, not much lower. I wouldn't go to 768, but going to, let's say, things become much more clear for me to see and analyze. And I, I don't use this for, let me go back. I don't, I don't use this to, to do pixel analysis or things like that. So, uh, I don't ex exactly need the 1080p for everything. And I, and I assume it's the case for most folks. You don't really need it for everything for some, for some tasks and application. Obviously you want to have the highest resolution possible. And this is not an iPad, so you don't really get over 1080p. So you want to be aware of that as well. So the last one. Again, this is not a review of Adobe products. I'm not an expert in Adobe products. I can manage my own, I can edit images and stuff, basic stuff, but as far as designing a book cover or things like that, uh, or, you know, using Adobe Premiere that I did, I did install Adobe Premiere on this and it actually works, but this, the processor is not strong enough for 
heavy duty video production. So you want to be aware of that also. Just imagine what happens to battery when you're doing video production with Adobe Premiere. You're probably not going to get, you know, eight hours or seven hours or things like that. Not going to get ever even close. Again, it's fast. I don't see any lags. I don't know if you guys see it. You can do basic stuff. I, I'm just showing you that, you know, you can use all these tools without having to worry about your tablet slowing down. Pretty much does what it promises as far as working. Now I don't know if this performance is going to be affected. If if you, is, well, let me rephrase that. I don't know how long you can actually use this software application without having you know without having to charge your battery. I know that when we used when we did our test for battery test and you can see it in a few videos back I think it was five and a half hours when we used Photoshop for about an hour and then there were some videos and stuff like that but I can't say that you know if you run this application for five hours your battery is gonna last five hours we have not tested that so you want to test that and I this is for all of these apps for Photoshop for Illustrator for InDesign I'm not sure how much the battery is going to last if you run the app from the start when you turn on your tablet till your design job is complete. So I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't go for eight hours. It's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Even with basic gaming, you get close to seven and a half hours. So you want to be aware of that. And that's about it. I think we pretty much covered all the products. It, again, this wasn't the Adobe tutorial or anything like that. I'm not in a position to to show how to use Photoshop or all these apps. But the fact that they've worked on a, it on tablets such as Acer Iconia may change your decision as far as whether you want to get an Ultra Book, whether you want to get a real PC, all in one desktop. Uh, that's that's up to you. But maybe this this helps. So I I, I hope it did. And uh, I think this is going to be probably the last one as far as we've been trying to cover ebooks and ebook apps and things like that and ebook readers. So I think this is going to be the last one covering Adobe products. But if you have any questions or if there's something unclear, I, I'm not sure what else to show as far as Adobe product. I, I, I'm not sure what else to show to, uh, to demonstrate the performance of this tablet. But if you have any suggestions or comments or feedback, uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. And for more, please go to bestebookreaders.com. Thanks, guys.